Good morning, YouTubers. You have reached the Brian Sledge channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye. No, are you, say, are you saying that the United States doesn't exist, therefore there should be no borders? Uh, I mean, of, of course. Time for the latest installment of Change My Mind. Real conversations on controversial topics, allowing people to rationalize their own positions. This one is kind of a sequel to Build the Wall. How do I report, uh, report this now? We got a lot of drive-by yelling. We have a little husky. Wall would help it. As you well know, the wall itself and immigration at large is a hot topic these days. All Americans are hurt by uncontrolled illegal migration. We, we don't need a wall. A, a, wants to cut a, a deal. wall is an immorality. It's not who we are as a nation. Build that wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. But what do real people think about President Trump's proposed border wall and about immigration at large. More importantly, what do they know? What do you think? We want to hear from you in the comments below. Uh, please enjoy. Hello. How are you? Uh, what's your name? Take your pardon? You're from Canada, right? I was raised in Canada, yes. Yeah. What's your name? Liv. Liv? Liv Bishop. Nice to meet you, Liv. Nice to meet you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you want, we can, we'll make, okay. I'm trying to make this brief, but I have a couple questions about your experience personally with the immigration well, system. Sure, but first off, let me kind of preface this, what we're doing here, you know? Yeah, yeah, I don't we're know debating how with it. Well, not debating, actually. Okay. The, the point here, and I think this doesn't really happen on college campus a whole lot, is mm -hmm. about rationalizing one's position. Yeah, of course. So I do support not only a wall, mm -hmm. but comprehensive immigration, not only reform, yeah. But uh, enforcing the laws that we currently have in the of books. Course. I think that we need secure borders, and yeah. I think uh, that that's a strong component to national security. Mm -hmm. So what part of that do you disagree with? You're welcome to change my mind. Uh, I agree that we do need a strong national security because it is important to the American people, people born here, people that immigrate here legally. I think the problem is our execution of it. Okay. I don't, I understand, like living in Texas all my life, most of my life, I totally understand what you mean by we need a physical barrier between them and us. And that's understandable, like, you don't know who's over there. You need to uh, assert that America is number one, you serve your country, this is, like, we need to protect our own. But I, I also I don't think... say anything about America number one, I just think uh -huh. that a nation needs borders. Security. Yeah, yeah. I totally We need to know who's here. Do you disagree with that? No, I agree with that. Okay, good. I understand where you're coming from that. Yeah. I just think the idea that a wall will protect that is not exactly the most meaningful way of doing it. Mm -hmm. I think it's more of a band-aid to a much greater problem that's our immigration system currently. Okay. Because it's extremely difficult to immigrate if you come from Mexico and it's extremely difficult to get a uh, refugee status and seek asylum in the US. So even though, because the big problem right, is right, our southern so. border. Our southern border is the problem. No one's like, oh no, we need a Canadian border. Like, no one's afraid of, uh, you know like, why that get is. out of here. Because we don't have, a, they don't have as much high crime rate. It's not as violent. No, we, we don't have a problem of illegal immigration from yeah, Canada yeah, yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think a big part, you mentioned some numbers earlier, I couldn't really hear because I was standing behind. Sure. Um, about how people get here. Most people do not cross the border physically on foot. Like, that's not the main way. Most people overstay their visas, they come here on planes. That's not true. Okay, what were your numbers to support it's that? It's about 42% are overstayed visas. Okay, okay. And the other. Uh, the rest, yeah, cross the border illegally. Okay. I mean, okay. enter illegally. What are the not demographics the of those people? Do you I, know? I couldn't care less. Mm hmm. Okay. Why does that matter? Um, I think the biggest part for that would be the refugee status, people that are seeking asylum, okay. and that they are just so desperate that they don't have a choice. Okay. Are you aware of what classifies uh, a you refugee status? You have to be status? fearing for your life, correct? No. Okay, what is it? You have to be uh, demonstrably oppressed, uh, typically under a regime who are uh -huh. systematically oppressing you okay. for your faith or uh -huh. race mm -hmm. uh, or creed. Um, okay. And if you look at international law, it's the nearest uh -huh. nation that could possibly accept refugees uh -huh. is required to under those laws. Okay. None of which would apply, of okay. course, to Mexico so, like, or Hun cartel victims and stuff like that. Okay. No, I see what you're saying. No, yeah, no, not no? like cartel victims. No. Yeah, so they would not apply for fees for that. Um, no, they wouldn't qualify as a yeah, refugee yeah. status, and certainly not a caravan coming uh -huh. from Honduras because they live yeah, in a bad country. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what do we currently have in place? As far as I understand, we have a fence. It is a small fence. It does not cover the entire border. Yeah, there's about seven, eight hundred miles of border that are completely unprotected. Uh -huh. And why are they unprotected? 
due to inactive politicians for a long time who haven't enforced the laws that we have in the book and haven't erected the uh, okay. defense wall, whatever you want to call it, yeah, yeah. Okay. as it was supposed to be. Um, do you... And by the way, I want to make sure that you really understand, it's not just about the wall. I've supported no. all the other comprehensive forms of immigration. But let yeah. me ask you this. Yeah. Do we both agree that we need to uh, enforce... No, oh. we need to know who's here legally. Yeah. Okay. okay. And do we both agree that we need strong borders as yes. a country? Okay. Just execution, I think, is where we differ. Okay, execution is where we differ. Because yeah. you were saying asylum seekers and you were kind of talking yeah, about yeah. which you know these people Who are not. Let in and like, right. I definitely agree that they should come through legally, but when push comes to pull, I can totally understand where they're coming from. I yeah. just don't think that those are the people that will be kept out from the wall. Or those will be the people that are kept out from the wall. The people that we're trying to keep out won't be. So you mean you think that uh, I don't a, think a, a refugee asylum seekers will be kept out? Is I that what think you're those would be the more likely just because they're so weak. The people that are most strong would be the cartels. So w would you mean like Christians in Syria? Is that what you'd be talking about? More or less. I mean, not specifically them because there's no wall to protect or against them. Right. Well, that's a big problem. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, yeah. we're a big country and we're not necessarily yeah. just protected by the ocean and a very small border. Yeah. But when we're talking about refugees, that would mm -hmm. qualify. Like a, a Christian in Syria. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely, of course. Yeah, and I would agree. Or, Christians in Syria. Yeah, yeah. They, need, they need help. They need help, right. Yeah, no yeah. one's helped them, by the way. Yeah, uh, I'm aware. Yeah, well, how are you aware? Because I've, I've, I do keep up a little bit with that. Okay. I mostly keep up with, like, as a Jew, keep up with the Jewish situation in the Middle East and their immigration problems. Sure. Yeah. So you're aware that walls work? More or less, yes. In that Israel specific, erected yeah. a wall and eliminated 99% of illegal immigration. But yeah. I was curious, how are you aware um, that, and this isn't a gotcha, that yeah. specifically Christian refugees haven't been taken in, because plenty of refugees have been taken in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they're the most targeted minority in Syria right now, are they not? Yes. Yeah, because it's a Muslim majority country. Right. Yeah. But less than 1% of the refugees accepted were Christian. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting, I didn't know that. Yeah, they would be asylum seekers, they would be refugees because yeah. you're burned in a cage if you're a Christian, yeah. and I would agree in taking those people in, but isn't, yeah. it, isn't it a little bit odd that less than, some people have the number is under 0.5% of the refugees wow. who were taken in were Christians. Uh-huh, I did not know that. Mainly, uh, you know, war-aged Muslim males were taken in. Interesting. I don't think that would be who that, that shouldn't be who we're aiming to, like, save if they're... Well, they'd be the refugees, is my point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I not see. someone in a uh -huh. Honduran caravan. So, uh -huh. how do we disagree on execution? How would you, you, you agree that we need to enforce our current mm -hmm. uh, immigration laws, yeah. you agree that we need a strong border? I think that how our immigration system is very, very weak in that we don't, it's not staffed enough. There's not enough money going to immigration mm -hmm. to take, because it's backed up like years and years, and it's very difficult to immigrate here legally. So if you are in a bind, say your uncle is about to get murdered by the Mexican drug cartels, you're desperate and you look at this um, situation that you don't have the ability to come here on your own or at least they have the thought process that they can't because it's so difficult and there's no there's no like fast way to do it uh, I think we definitely need to navigate instead of putting so much funding into a wall like I can understand a fence that's fine like the 20 billion dollar wall is where it's pushing well, it why I, I don't understand the difference between a fence and a wall um, the problem One's is cheaper. one is racist and one is, well, okay, it's still a drop in the bucket and the fence yeah. is not that much cheaper, by the mm -hmm. way. How much is the difference, do you know? Well, the most generous estimates have a wall at about $20 billion uh -huh. and really right now what they're talking about is mm -hmm. $5 billion being okay. allotted, which Democrats have already agreed to one point something billion. Yeah, Forgive yeah. my rounding Yeah, of course, here. I understand. Um, and of course they supported building some kind of a barrier across mm -hmm. the 700, 800 miles yeah, from yeah. the border for a very long time. Uh -huh. So. Um, why not just build the most effective barrier possible? But if we just said, okay, like Donald Trump, mm -hmm. a barrier can be partially fenced, partially walled, depending mm -hmm. on the topography. Uh -huh. You okay with that? Um, I think so. I just think that oh, the um, idea, I think the emphasis shouldn't be on the wall. I think it should be maybe, I can understand like it, peace of mind. I totally get that. There's a fence between me and the bad guys. That's fine. But I think uh, a we should, instead of putting all of the money, the 20 billion or the 5 billion or the 1.6 whatever well, it's billion. not all the money, it's very, very little. Our annual budget is 4 trillion. Yeah, it's huge. So but, 5 billion is... But I think by doing that, we're neglecting the fact that we do have a broken system for immigration. Yeah. That but, we do need to support. But the plan is actually to start enforcing those laws that haven't been enforced. Okay. That's a big part of the comprehensive mm -hmm. plan that Donald Trump is putting forward. In okay. fact, enforcing laws that were put on the books from Barack Obama. So uh -huh. it seems to me like you would support a wall, a barrier, a fence, mm -hmm. if it's, let's say, a hybrid wall fence, mm -hmm. whatever works, if we also crack down on those yes. overstay visas, if we deported people who are here illegally. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Okay, good. Okay, so we're on the same page on that aspect.
but I think that the conversation isn't about immigration anymore. It's a, it's about, or not the immigration system. It's about keep the bad guys out. They're going to come get us and they're going to steal our women and rape everyone. Well, and that's, that's a part of the immigration problem is yeah. keeping people out. Mm -hmm. but that's the biggest issue, of course. That's the only way I you stop know. it. Is that the biggest issue or is that the most scary issue? Because I think the most, depending on how much fear you can bring into the people depends on how much they'll care about this aspect. This is kind of what I've talked about before, a reverse nirvana fallacy, where uh -huh. you say, well, something needs to be done. Uh -huh. We need some kind of a barrier. Mm -hmm. We need to enforce the laws that we have. We need to deport people who are here illegally. Mm -hmm. But because it's created some sort of ethnocentrism among some mm -hmm. people, I really yeah. haven't seen it. I've never mm -hmm. met a Republican who says, the wall needs to keep brown people out. Uh -huh. I've seen people who just say, we need to stop the problem of illegal immigration, uh -huh. especially because it's costing 100 and mm -hmm. plus billion dollars to the taxpayer. Uh -huh. Where do we disagree? It seems like, as far as solutions, you would do all of those things. You just maybe don't like the messaging which the media the, has kind of put out there. The, definitely the fear-mongering is a problem for me among yeah. the media and then the... I think what's going on with the government right now with the government shutdown is extremely childish. I think compromise is what this country was founded on and we mm -hmm. definitely need to make a compromise to this. Yeah. Um, Who would you hold responsible for not making a compromise right now? I think they're both equally responsible, honestly. Well, that's fair. That's yeah. fair. Like, um, I totally... I don't agree with Donald Trump for saying, yeah, that's fine, and then totally turning around like three days later and being like, we're shutting the government down, this is over. But also I see the Demo like, Democrats aren't entirely in well, the right. They're, they're against something that they supported when it was Barack Obama. They uh -huh. were yeah, for a wall a, and conference immigration reform until it was Donald Trump. Yeah. And now he's even made some compromises, right? He mm -hmm. said, okay, we'll extend DACA three years right now while we solve this problem so we can get the government rolling again. Yeah, I think that the just stubborn, like, headbutting in the government right now right. is absolutely ridiculous. But if he's made some compromises and they've said no, no I compromise think they at are all. also in the wrong place. Yeah, I would say, I, I would argue, I think, maybe we disagree, but I would argue they're more responsible after uh -huh. these concessions have been made. Yeah, I understand what you're So I guess my issue is, it doesn't seem like we disagree on policy at all. No, we disagree on what needs to be done. Okay, so what do you think needs to be done? Forgive me, I'm... I'm yeah, you're I'm, Sorry, let me just check real quick. Okay. I class it once. So, right. just final thoughts, if you don't mind. No problem. <laughs> uh, I think we should, instead of putting all this money into the wall, I think we should put it into our immigration system to try and better the... Um, method by which people get here legally because um, right now the system is very clunky, very long, it's uh, t strenuous, there's not staffed enough, not enough money going in. Mm -hmm. I think we need to take care of getting people here legally and then the illegal stuff, stop making it such a fear-mongering event of Oh, like, I think that's that's a motion. We're talking about we yeah. do need to stop illegal immigration, right? Yes, but I think the fear-mongering needs to go away. I think we need to talk about facts. I like your numbers. I yeah. think it's very important to have numbers. Here's a number that you might consider fear-mongering. Yeah. Illegal immigrants commit crime disproportionately. Okay. So it's completely accurate to say that it's it's a much tougher spill, uh, pill to swallow, too, by the way, if someone rapes or kills, and they yeah. have no business being in this country in the first place. Yeah. If mm -hmm. that were your sister or your mother yeah. or, I don't know, your brother by mm -hmm. a cartel being shut up, you'd mm -hmm. probably feel like, man, that guy had no business being here in the first place. Mm -hmm. We haven't done anything. Sure, yeah. we should fix the broken system right now as far as work mm -hmm. visas are being overstayed. People will always break the law. Yeah. But you're saying we shouldn't be spending all this money. It's a drop in the bucket. Mm -hmm. We are talking about a very small amount of money to mm -hmm. stop the people coming here illegally. I would be totally fine So that then at that point, we can fix the current system and see yeah. who's on the books. Okay. One can't happen without the other. Mm -hmm. I think I would be more okay with the wall if we took the money from, say, something that's like defense. We have a ton of money going into defense. If we were to take money, put and more money lauded to immigration, then I think I would be more okay with the wall and more spending money on a wall and less of a like fence. Okay. But what I don't about think taking it from the wealth from like the welfare programs that we have? I don't like. I don't agree with that. I no? think welfare is important. You think I it's think more important than national defense? Um, as someone who benefits from it, yes. But I am a biased opinion. That is a biased opinion. Extremely Do you so. think that welfare is a legitimate role of government compared to national defense? Um, I can see why other people don't think it is, but I personally think it is. I okay. think it's very important for a government to take care of its citizens. Constitutionally, it's can you make an argument that national defense No, I think this is, is less that's important a moral than welfare? Thing. Okay, so it's a that's moral, a my thing. moral thing. Well, you also understand that adds to the, the great problem that we have with illegal immigration, right? Yeah. The reason I say that is, okay, they're benefiting they're costing, from the welfare. They're benefiting from the welfare I, stage yeah. uh, in a way that hurts American yeah. taxpayers. Both American taxpayers who are using welfare and not using welfare, by yeah. the way. And I think that's a big difference a lot of people don't touch on when we talk about being a nation of immigrants, which I appreciate you didn't bring up, by the way, because yeah, a lot of people say we're a nation of immigrants. I think yeah, we yeah. both delineate, we both are willing to We've acknowledge come a legal time. immigration <laughs> and illegal immigration. Yeah. They were migrating no here legally Avery when there was no Island. welfare state. Yeah. But right, right now you have people who can enter here completely illegally and uh -huh. 
and they're enticed to do so because of a welfare state. Okay. So I yeah. think if you're going to take money from anything, not take it from a completely legitimate role of government, which is national defense. Uh -huh. You could argue that a border is actually a significant part of national defense, yeah. as it were. I think that uh, would be a good Take it from the welfare it. state that is enticing them, that is uh, attracting them to begin with, and put that into the wall. But you're also hurting that legal Americans that have been here and benefit from it and need it just to get by, stuff like that. Well, I they're think they're being hurt more by people coming here illegally and being a but burden in the But if we were to take it system. from the defense, then like you said, it is a national defense thing. So instead of putting it directly into the army, take it and put it in immigration and uh, border security. Okay. So, you're, so you're fiscal conservative? No. Well, then <laughs> what does it matter if we're talking about $5 billion for a while? You're saying, well, we have to, it sounds to me like you just want to take money from national defense. No, no, but I think... Then who cares if we spend $5 billion on a wall? If you're not a fiscal conservative, we spend, that's a drop in the bucket compared to the welfare program. Okay, okay then Especially, maybe I am a fiscal conservative. Okay, fiscal conservative okay. who's pro-welfare. Yes. Okay, so some of those things are a little, 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 little tough to juxtapose. Yeah. I think, but I think we found some common ground here. I think we did. This has been a great discussion. You, you came in, you seemed like you were a little, little bit hot-headed, like you thought this was going to be a little nervous. more hostile. Okay, <laughs> all right. Did you just say no balls? <laughs> we have Did a gender I, sensor here. So I, I was going to say, you just got misgendered. Today. Yeah, that's right off the bat. That's pretty. <laughs> By the way, no offense if you don't actually have balls. I, it's, <laughs> oh, it's, hey. it's, if you disagree, we well, um, want to change our mind. See, I don't really disagree with the fact that we need to enforce our laws. Okay. Of course, we do need to enforce our laws. But my problem with uh, the wall is just, isn't there a simpler solution to this broader problem? Uh, someone told me before that the reason why it's being built, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's mic. okay, that's okay. Uh, the reason why it's being built. I keep built, bringing it in because you're pulling away. I'm not gonna hit you oh, with it, so. Okay. <laughs> um, somebody told me that the reason why is to stop illegal immigration. But the fact is, is that most illegal immigration is from expired visas. Yeah. So wouldn't it just be a simpler uh, way to just uh, keep track, keep tabs on people who have visas from overseas and just keep a look at them instead of creating a five billion dollar wall that's going to require maintenance yeah and that's my well I, I appreciate where you're coming from with that this is where we kind of run into a common issue with um often on college campuses so how confident are you that the majority of illegal immigrants are just overstate visas um i'm gonna say at least a good 80 percent 80 percent confident or 80 percent of them on uh, 80 percent of them um 80 percent yeah. of them yeah I'm, I'm i'm very confident it's 42. 42. it's 42 percent which means less than half okay which means the majority of the illegal immigrants are crossing through the border uh, right. unfettered but how about this what about doing both um okay i'd be down for both but my problem with the wall is it's too expensive wouldn't it just be easier to create more checkpoints something like that so how would you create checkpoints I mean, it, it would still have to be an infrastructure project, but I'm saying on the, that- On the border, you mean? Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying uh, we don't need an entire concrete wall to do that. Uh, with a concrete wall, you don't have, like, no, nothing's gonna stop somebody from like chiseling away at the wall, but someone at sitting at like a desk watching the border, they're probably gonna like, you know, be able to see. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's all a part of the immigration plan that, that President Trump is proposing. And it's certainly something, I think we find common ground there that we both think we need more than just a wall yeah. or just a fence, whatever we want to call it. You know, we're not necessarily mm -hmm. talking about a concrete wall along the whole border. Um, I, I agree with you. I would actually disagree with one point. You said it'd be about $5 billion. The most liberal estimates in the wall, it would cost about $20 billion plus. $20 billion. $20 billion plus. So I'm giving you more there, right? That sounds expensive. Um, and I would say that, yeah, I, I obviously I'm a fiscal conservative. I don't want to waste taxpayer dollars. I assume that you're probably lining up on the, the same side of the coin there. But how much do you think illegal immigrants cost the, uh, the American taxpayers every year? You're going to have to be more concise on that. Just saying how much do illegal immigrants cost, that, that's encompassing a lot of things. You, you're yeah. going to have to say... Using social services, uh, abusing the healthcare system, public education, using services that they're not necessarily paying for because they don't pay taxes. Um, how much do you think they burden the American tax... You and me, yeah. the American taxpayer each year? I, I, I don't think I'd be able to give a informed decision okay. on that. And, and that's not a trick question. The whole purpose of this, I hope, I hope you feel it's been respectful, is not to do gotcha, but I think a lot of people aren't really informed on this issue. Uh, illegal immigrants cost, on average, the American taxpayer, $116 billion a year. Mm. 
So even if you were to take the most liberal estimates, you, you said five, I said, well, let's even go with $20 billion to build a wall. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, the investment reward ratio there, $116 billion to the taxpayer each year, $20 billion is kind of a drop in the bucket. But as you said, 42% are on uh, expired visas, right? 42% are on expired visas. So yeah, we're, we're getting close to 60% are coming through. Yeah. The wall would help with that. And then, of course, cracking down on, uh, on visas that have been overstated. And Donald Trump has talked about that and definitely uh, wants to heighten security and enforce the laws that we have in the book. So a lot of laws that we have haven't really been enforced as it relates to visas. Mm -hmm. So I, why don't we do both? Um, hmm. Both a wall? Both a wall. Are we still talking a physical wall? Yeah. I, I got to say, I, I think that there are better. I still think that there are better options, like the checkpoint issue. I still think that checkpoints well, would be... We're proposing both. Both. Yeah, there, there, there will be both. It's not going to be a completely unprotected wall. Right now you have hundreds of miles of completely unprotected border border between the United States and Mexico. And so what we're talking about is putting up a wall, a fence, a barrier, as well as having security, as well as also enhancing cybersecurity, cracking down on visas. It's not just about a wall. You know, I'm sure someone in college, you know, it's, it's not as simplistic as that. So if we do all of that, we have a wall and we have those checkpoints. We have people there monitoring the wall. And we know that it would cost $20 billion, let's say, and save the American taxpayers $116 billion going forward once we solve the problem. Would you be okay with doing all of the above? Wall plus checkpoints? Wall plus checkpoints and uh, dealing with the, the, the visa issue, yeah. Well, I, I still do think that one of the problems with the wall is that a lot of the area onto the border, isn't that all private property? Wouldn't that all have to be taken from Americans? You're talking about eminent domain? Yeah. Yeah, well, here, here's what we are talking about. And I understand your concern there. We are talking about an issue of national security, mm -hmm. right? And putting a ball up, or, uh, a ball up, putting a wall up around our national border mm -hmm. is either important or it's not. I mean, I think we both agreed here that we need to do something about illegal immigration. Yeah. Sounds to me like you're not for open borders. I, I'm not. Okay, good. So we find common ground there. Sounds to me like we both agree the overstaying visas are a problem. Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me like we also both agree we need to stop the influx of illegal immigrants right now. Yeah. So if you say, well, wouldn't a ball, will wall be on private property? Well, wouldn't we need checkpoints? Let me ask you this. This is kind of where I think we, we, we find ourselves at a crossroads. It's a bit of a reverse nirvana fallacy where it's, well, it wouldn't really work entirely. So let me ask you this. What do you think we should do if not a wall with heightened border security? How do we solve the problem? Uh, okay, this is kind of a joke, but a friend once told me, uh, if we had, if we had one person making fifteen dollars an hour, just st like on a really high chair, just watching everybody, for every ten miles, mm -hmm. you could pay that five billion dollars proposed. That could run that program for fifty-four years. Now okay. that's my entire point. Why? Why don't we just have checkpoints? Why don't we use drones? Okay. Why don't we use some other sort of form of security? Well, why? Why do you say? Why do you preface? your presupposition there, your kind of argument with, this is kind of a joke. Is it a joke? Because then it sounds like you were saying that's something we should do. Well, I I'm saying that the really high chair thing is a joke, you know? It'd be, it'd be kind of impractical to have just okay. some dude on like a hundred foot chair. I, I think that's kind of like a gross misunderstanding. Okay. But, but I think if we had some, some form of monitoring of the border, mm -hmm. now, I'm not talking about a wall, but you know, with today's technology, you can have drones, you can have surveillance, you can have, sure. oh, it's really raining hard. I know. Um, I appreciate you guys st sticking it out. I know it's raining. Yeah. Sorry we didn't bring umbrellas for all. Uh, you can have these sorts of, uh, there, there are ways to do uh, the wall. There are ways to monitor the border. There are ways to... Okay, so let's go with kind of your, your um, I guess, solution there. Let's ignore the high chair, but you said having even just someone being paid $15 an hour at the border. Yeah. Right, monitoring it. Okay. Are you sort of, are you privy to what goes on with the Mexican drug cartels? Um, Pretty brutal people, right? I'm aware. And criminals who cross over the border illegally? Yeah. Not the friendliest bunch. Mm -hmm. First off, where are you going to find someone to stop those people for $15 an hour? Okay. And how do you equip them to stop those people? Well, I'm, I'm a believer in the legal system. I, I just think that just having somebody monitoring them, having the evidence... As they walk in? Yeah. So you would rather just have someone at $15 an hour watch them walk in illegally and then deal with that problem afterward? We'll deal with that problem quickly. How, let, how, let the local police departments deal with it. Okay, so now we're burdening the cost to local police departments. Yes. Okay. 
as opposed to a federal issue, now we're going to local police departments, but we run into the issue like we see now, sanctuary cities. Mm -hmm. Where you have cities, you know, in the United States, I'm sure you're familiar with them, you can't deport not only illegal immigrants, but illegal immigrants who have committed subsequent crimes beyond coming to the country illegally. Mm. Why, why should we let these people in? Why don't we stop them before they come in? You, you do realize, again, that's going to add to the tax burden like we're talking about. It doesn't seem very realistic. Well, as I said before, um, we're, we're just gathering evidence. That, that's all I'm saying, gather evidence. I'm not saying that, I did say originally that the police department should detain these people, but I'm not right. saying that the local city should perhaps charge them. Maybe we should get the federal government to charge them. After they've come into the country illegally. Yes. That's a much lengthier and costlier process than stopping them from coming in here. Not to mention the fact that they don't have the right to be here in the first place. What's the estimate for current, uh, the current amount of illegal immigrants in the U.S.? Uh, it, it's really hard to measure because, again, they're off the books. They're not here legally. Do you have an estimate? It's in the millions. In yeah, the it's well in the millions, yeah. You, okay. some, you can see, find some sites that say it's only 5 million. You can find some sites that say it's up to 20 million. So it's hard to measure. How much does it cost for a federal federal court uh, to have a federal court look at the issue? Well, it depends. You're talking about where it goes up to a Supreme Court, you know, something like the Ninth Circuit Court, the, just like the a, final Supreme Court. It's actually more expensive, for example, to put someone to death today than it is just to take care of them for the rest of their lives in prison. But I think we're getting so far off the beaten path here, that's not our job. And we shouldn't set up a system that allows for people to commit a crime and then retroactively administer justice. And here's, here's something else I think that you're not, in, uh, you're not uh, thinking of here. You know the issue that we talk about, like DACA, anchor babies, dreamers? Um, the issue there is the parents have committed a crime. They brought their children here illegally, or they came here illegally and got pregnant, or they were pregnant when they migrated here illegally. And after that, because they've committed a crime, if we have to deport them as criminals, they are separated from their children. They committed the crime, right? These incidents wouldn't occur if we secured the border in the first place. So you're actually talking about adding to these incidents. I don't think that's very compassionate because you'd be separating families at that point. You'd be putting them in different prisons. It seems to me that we both agree there needs to be some kind of an immigration plan, which I appreciate. A lot of people I'm sure will sit down and talk about open borders and how a wall is mean or racist, and you didn't do that. I actually think that simply having a barrier, cracking down on visas, making sure that we know who is in this country, and of course deporting people who are here illegally, who are committing crimes at the very least, is a more feasible program. Um, and I, I hope that maybe we, we found some common ground there and maybe we agree on some of that. Perhaps. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. You too. Go make fun of your ballless friend. Really quickly, if you enjoy these authentic, unedited types of conversations, do think of supporting the program at lotterwithcredit.com slash mug club. You get access to The Daily Show, as well as a catalog of other shows, along with this hand-etched, girthy mug. And, of course, you support the program, as it's the only way to make it sustainable, because uh, tech overlords don't like us. Here we go. You're more than welcome to change, change my mind. It's not necessarily that I disagree, I guess, with the concept of border security, I just think the wall is a wasteful symbol mm -hmm. and like that our taxes pay for it. So like I would believe in using 21st century technology to enforce a border like what Republican Will Hurd suggested using, you know, drones, using um, some of the seismic technology that Israel has to detect tunnels, which would prevent a lot of the, um, I guess, more dangerous, like criminals that are trying to cross the border, you know, drugs, guns, human smuggling. And I believe that'd be more of a, I guess, permanent solution rather than a temporary one that'd be symbolic. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I agree, I'm glad that you agree with like more of a comprehensive reform of immigration rather yes. than just a border because we do have a lot of visa overstay, people coming through the waters of the Gulf of Mexico to the southern states down there in Florida. So, I mean, I don't necessarily disagree with you. I just think it's a very temporary, it's a very like, um, temporary American type of solution where we don't go for the long term immediately we're always going for the temporary solution you think America doesn't go for the long term solution not with all our decisions no. not with all our decisions but I'd say you know the country that went from being oppressed one century going to a new land only to become the world's greatest superpower and only superpower the next that's kind of long ball it is pretty long ball but yeah. it wasn't I, wasn't I come from Canada we just kissed the ring of the uh, the royalty so <laughs> yeah. true, true. Yeah. part of the commonwealth yes um, but like we have her on our coins it's very silly but I, I do I do appreciate that uh, we both find common ground here you do agree that we need comprehensive yes immigration reform I hate to say reform because the truth is we haven't enforced a lot of the laws that are already on our books mm -hmm. as you mentioned with the visas the, the visa overstays uh, especially under Barack Obama these, these were grossly violated uh, and I think that needs to be solved as well I, I did ask your your colleague here um, it was mr. Barba yes, 
and he was surprised. Are you aware of kind of how many illegal immigrants are actually just here on overstaying their visas versus crossing the border illegally? No, sir, I don't. Would, would you kind of, do you have a general guess? A lot of people think it's most are visa overstays. Um, I mean, it's hard to exactly tell because I'm not sure even the government themselves actually know the number. I bet it'd be better for the state governments to have more data on that rather yeah. than the federal. So it's it's kind of hard to tell which. It's a good it's a good point. With illegal immigration, it's hard to get accurate statistics. Visa overstays a little bit less so because you can see people who've applied for visas and people who haven't right. left or haven't necessarily been deported properly. It's uh, it's around forty percent. So you still have the majority of illegal immigration is, is occurring at the southern border. Mm -hmm. And the vast majority of illegal immigrants are uh, coming from places like Mexico, Honduras, uh, El Salvador. Of course, we just saw Mexico recently got really upset saying, get these, get these Hondurans out of here. Um, let me ask you this. Why not do all of the above? Again, because I believe it's, again, it's a temporary solution. Like, first we need to, we need to go to well, the right now there's no solution though, right? Right, yeah, there, there, well, there's nothing right now. We don't know where this one shut down. Right. The, we need like a permanent solution. So. We'll, we build a wall, right? We build a wall, we have immigration reform. You know, we build walls all around, even our poorest Canadian border, where you're from, you know, you can just cross. It's, the, the picture it's is crazy. It's actually more well guarded than the southern border. A lot of people don't realize that's because the Canadian police also do their job, but yeah. True, but I think we have to get to the root of why are they coming here? Mm -hmm. We can build like, you know, let's say we, the first wall doesn't work, we can build one 10 times higher, right? Put guns there, but people are still gonna be coming. So we need to go to the root of the problem of why they're coming. We destabilize their governments and we don't like the government, the, the political lean. Okay. So we overthrow them and then these people have no government and then these criminals that use the porous border to you know, take guns from Texas and to send them south. So that's another problem. And so then these people are still going to be coming and then they're going to destabilize Mexico unless we're going to build more walls, a huge wall into Mexico and they just keep going down. So we need a to wall find into Mexico. Yes, if like no, we're only talking about here, and it seems like you were on board with, and now it seems like you're kind of zagging as to where you started. It seemed like you said, um, well, no, we I'm should I'm have suggesting if we build security a wall, with with drones, with guards, yeah. something a little bit more modern than a wall. Well, and now thinking, you're saying, but the problem is the root cause is we're destabilizing these governments. Let's assume that that's true. Okay, let's assume that that's true. That it's all America's fault that we've destabilized these regions and that we're the ones who screwed up Mexico. That's why they've never gotten it right going back to the uh, uh, the Mayans and Aztecs, the Incas, the Peruvian. Um, so let's assume all of that's correct. It's all our fault. All right. Well, I, well, I don't, there still I don't, is a problem with the fault. Okay, but let's, I'm just saying for the sake of argument, let's assume that's the case. We still do have a problem mm -hmm. with illegal immigration, right? Absolutely, yeah. And we need to solve it. So how do we solve it? We get to the root of the problem. We invest in those countries, not just in the companies that are there, the multinational corporations, giving to the governments that are corrupt or the ones that we believe are going to keep those countries stable but are actually oppressing the people to leave. If we invest in infrastructure, instead of spending billions on a wall, sending billions of dollars to the Middle East to places we'll never go and they won't come here, like unless they come through plane or, you know, through visa or overstay. Through the border. Or through the border. Happens with, a lot. I think that's really overstated in my opinion. In your um, opinion, okay. But if we invest in those places rather than the Middle East where it's just going to get blown up, more war, more geopolitical power strokes with China and Russia. If we invest in Latin America in, a, in kind of a one belt, one road, we have a vision for our continent. Yeah. We can eliminate the problem of illegal immigration. I disagree, but a couple things. Are you saying we invest in these other countries so they don't while building here. a wall and securing our border simultaneously? Or you're saying just invest in these economies, in these countries? I believe it's securing the border. I think a wall is a waste of money. I think we can go into a more permanent solution rather okay. than temporary. Well, walls work. Um, and it, again, Donald Trump has not proposed only the wall. That's sort of the, the slogan catchphrase. He's the first person to really actively push for the same kind of comprehensive immigration reform that uh, Barack Obama prom promised and Nancy Pelosi agreed yeah, to. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. you know, she agreed to funding. She said we need to put about a 700 mile fence in the southern border. That's really what he's asking for right now. So let's say, okay, we don't do a wall, but we do what you are suggesting, drones, other methods of, of uh, interception. Mm -hmm. it seems to me like, are you suggesting doing that as well as investing? Or are you saying try investing and don't build a wall, or don't build a border? As it I were? think we need absolutely to secure a border. I've never debated against that. I just think sure. the wall is wasteful, a wall itself. Okay. I think we can employ more technology that won't require the same of investment in the long term to just maintain a wall. And I think it's very inexpensive. E even a wall with is a, walls, it's a rounding error when you look at our budget. 
five, the, the five billion right now is, is a rounding error. We have a four um, trillion dollar that, budget. That's a, that, I mean, you can when you start using rounding errors, it's the same concept a lot of Democrats use to keep and Republicans to keep spending money. But now, that, when you look at illegal good... immigrants who cost the American taxpayer, you know, one hundred and sixteen billion dollars per year. So, if a wall would work, and there's a lot of, out of evidence to suggest that it would work, um, Israel just erected a wall. Ninety nine percent of illegal immigration is stopped. I want to go to your... a lot of problems. I mean, you solve immigration, then you have missiles being shot across the border, and then tunnels. You created a tunnel problem in Israel, yeah, well, which is really bad for Israel if, right if, now. If we have Mexicans firing rockets into our uh, into our churches, I think we'll have a problem. But I, I, I don't foresee that happening anytime soon. The second we hear a mariachi band yell out "Allahu Akbar," I'll duck for cover, and maybe we'll we'll go on that uh, that pathway. Let me ask you this: You say invest in these countries. I'm curious as as to um, how we would do that. Do you mean invest in companies? No, invest absolutely not. Governments. Not even governments. Okay, so how do we invest in their infrastructure? We just, I think we need more of a cooperation. We've done what we did with Germany and after World War II and a lot of the, those countries. We forget a lot of these countries in Latin America are our allies. Regardless whether we're paying them, we prop them up, or trade agreements. Right. If we prop up these countries, show them mutual respect, as fellow continental Americans, I think we can solve this problem. How would we invest in them is my point. I don't I, understand. I'm not a politician, sir. I'm not. Well, you suggested it as a solution. I'm not trying to catch you on anything. I mean, we invest in roads, we invest in education, clean water. Mexico's having a clean water problem. If we also check some of our companies that are over there that are exploiting these people, mm -hmm. taking their water supply, taking their clean water, destroying their natural environments where they need to farm. So, see, you just said you, you said earlier that you weren't doing this, but you are implicating the United States as though we are the problem there. Not you necessarily. Think I wouldn't say people are leaving because we're stealing their water. I'm not necessarily saying it's the United States as a whole is problem. Okay. It's certain actors. So we invest in their roads. We invest in their infrastructure. <coughs> in other words, we'd have to give that to their government. Not necessarily. I mean, we haven't done that in the Middle East, and we didn't do that in Germany, and we didn't do that in a lot of countries that we've invested in. Okay. So how will we do this here in Mexico? We use we are we're our allies. We can work together and do things. We've built things together. We built things. So again, but. I think something that's kind of important, you mentioned destabilizing a lot of these regions in these countries. Mm -hmm. Well, how do we do that? Um, I mean, there's... By investing let's say, like, for in example, infrastructure and trying to bet on a certain team. Right? That's how ISIS was created. I agree with you. I'm more of a non-interventionist. But if you invest now in New Mexico, mm -hmm. anytime you're investing, you're investing with somebody. Yes. So it's... <laughs> It's ironic that you say we need to invest in these countries and then also talk about how the whole reason that they're destabilized is because of prior investment. And I don't think that solves the problem, and I know you said you're not a politician, um, of an open border right now, hundreds of miles of open border, which costs the American taxpayers hundreds of billions of dollars every year. Well, the will wall, we benefit from that, though? From cheap labor? I mean, maybe not necessarily you're benefiting or anyone in this crowd is benefiting, but we have lots of very rich people that are benefiting from extremely cheap labor who mm -hmm. continue the only reason they're here too is because there's work yeah. that's the reason they're in this country and yeah. that's another problem we need to get to the root of we need to be, maybe have a universal e-verify maybe we need to have all these corporations be like you need to go through your employees go who's working for you and the reason I, I agree on cracking down on employers who are hiring illegal immigrants and that's why they're here there's lots of work we benefit from cheap food that's underpriced because we use under labor underpaid labor so I think there's a lot more benefits to that cost where it comes out almost even. You well, know, the analysis would show that it's not. It costs the American tax. And you might be talking about corporations. That's kind of interesting that you bring that up. So you think it's okay if corporations are benefiting from cheap labor because the American taxpayer, the average citizen, is not. They're the ones footing the bill. Yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't think it's right. I don't think. So then I guess we would agree in securing the border by whatever means there you're talking. I think a wall is an important component to that. Cracking down on the uh, overstaying of visas. Uh, and uh, deporting people who are here illegally. Do we both agree on that? I think on the de deportation part, why would we deport people who are here working and making money? Why wouldn't we use that as a money-making opportunity? Because they came here illegally, they broke the law. I mean, was it their fault that they broke the law, or is it our fault not enforcing it? That's, that's where I say... It was their fault. Is it their fault if it's we didn't fault. enforce? Yeah, it's their fault. Just, like, oh, if so you, just like if you go into that library right now and steal a book and the security guard doesn't see it, it's not the security guard's fault. It's your fault. Would it be the library's fault, though? No. If, I mean, if there's no, no enforcement of laws, is there necessarily a law? Yes. If there's a law, you broke it, you just didn't get caught. And then if they saw you in your physical science class and hauled you out in cuffs and said, hey, you stole a book, they'd be well within the rights to do so. Yes, I do believe that the person knowingly breaking the law is breaking the law. 
and that person should be deported. Especially if someone's committing subsequent crimes. And you have with sanctuary cities, we can't even deport people who've come here. When we say committed illegal immigrants committing crimes, it's redundant. But I'm talking about subsequent crimes in addition to right, yeah. migrating here illegally. We can't even deport some of those people. They're in our prisons right now. Which I think is, I think is wrong when we can't deport them. People so, that are committing crimes, that are being violent. Because mm -hmm. that is a big waste. And we should be putting criminals that should be there in those prisons rather than people that shouldn't be here, like, legally. So you would agree with deporting criminals who are in our prisons who are here mm -hmm. illegally? Absolutely. I don't think we should be holding violent, uh, undocumented immigrants in our prisons. I completely agree with you. And by the way, I think that's uh, an important point as we talk about the government shutdown, because a lot of blame has mm -hmm. been placed around. When we talk about, like we said, a rounding error, we talk about five billion, the Democrats have agreed to one point something billion, and Donald Trump wants, I think, 5.1 or 5.7 billion along with comprehensive immigration reform. He's offered to extend DACA three years. Um, but That's you're a talking temporary about, solution that should be permanent. It sh I don't believe it should be permanent. We should have a permanent solution But again, right now he's trying sides. to get the government started back up. Whereas uh, if you look at the current Democratic Party, they don't believe the policy is that you can't even deport illegal immigrants who are committing crimes here right now. And that's a very new policy, by the way. It's only happened under President Trump. When you look at how they uh, how they interacted with President Obama and even going back to Clinton, it was a very very common solution to create a wall and of course to deport people who are here illegally committing crimes. For some reason now, there's no compromise on that. And I think maybe you and I, if we were sitting down, could have a little bit little bit more of a productive solution to hopefully stopping the government shutdown than the current Democratic Party with Donald Trump. But I think uh, we line up on more than we than we disagree. All right, nice talking to you. I appreciate it, Mr. Barber. Yes. Thank you very much, Thank sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, tear down the wall! Tear down the wall! Yeah. Tear down the wall! Cool. Tear down the wall! Cool story, bro. Okay, yeah. So, uh, I'm an anarcho-capitalist, which means that uh, I favor the doctrine that uh, private property is sacrosanct, uh, the rule of contract is sacrosanct, therefore the United States as a, the United States government in that it presupposes that um, everything, everybody that's in its borders, uh, they have a right to tax, they have a right to uh, basically do whatever the heck that uh, institution may uh, want. What, what does it have to do with, well, no, are, you saying, no, no. are you saying that the United States doesn't exist, therefore there should be no borders? Uh, I mean, of, of course. Of okay. course, yeah. So, yeah, I, I yeah, would disagree with that. So what, what would you see in the place of the United States? You would rather well, no, have a Native American ethno state? Well, no, obviously not. That's obviously not what I uh, believe in. However, uh, okay, so no, let's, no, no, let, no, me, no, let me go no, back no, here. No. The Native if you want to talk about, uh, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, rep the reparations argument is something totally different. I'm not talking about reparations. No, I know, but I mean, uh, what I'm coming from is that what gives the United States government uh, the ability to do whatever it whatever it wants to do? I mean, and do you, I, I, that, can that's I ask my you a question? question. Yeah, of course. Do you believe that countries exist? Uh, no, because they're not done through uh, contracts. Uh, okay, so you don't believe that, that any countries exist? Oh, no, I don't. Of course, I mean, okay. Obviously, Thank you very much. No, no, I don't no, think no, we're going to no, have no, a ton, no. ton to agree no, on there. Well, I appreciate no, it. I mean, the fact. If, okay, I can't talk right. about securing a country if you don't think countries are a thing. No, no, I just disagree I, with you. Oh, okay. Okay, Stephen. Okay, Stephen. <laughs> okay. Okay, Stephen. Okay, crazy person. Let's go one more. If you disagree, you're more than welcome to change my mind. I see you have a sign there, so yeah, I'm assuming I kind of can guess where you're coming well, from. Well, I guess it's a conversation starter, so we can we can start off with this. Is that like uh, people, the the government, you know, the, the right wing sort of that supports this uh, building of the wall, they are often trying to deport people who come in seeking refuge and and seeking shelter and um, put them back to the place where, oh, for, for, first of all, I think we can um, hopefully agree that that completely messes with a person's life. If you come in and then are pushed back out to a system that you tried to get away from, no, uh, no, you don't, you don't think no. that's, you don't think that's harmful no, no, I to think, them. I think, no, it's not that I wouldn't say it's harmful to them, but you use the term uh, seeking asylum or refugees. Mm -hmm. There's a clear definition. What constitutes a refugee? Well, someone who is um, struggling for the government, struggling from due to the government in their own country, and then is coming in seeking a a better experience in America because that's of not what a refugee country. is. You don't think that's right? Okay, what's that's refugee? not what the legal okay. definition of refugee is. The legal definition? So I think it's important to note. Do you, are, have you been taught this in school? What a refugee is? What is required for someone to be a refugee, and what the protocol is to deal with refugees? Nothing that rigid. No. 
Okay. Well, no, it's, it's international law. So it is specifically somebody who is being persecuted for their religion, color, creed by the government, okay. facing physical bodily harm, usually death, uh, from their government. And so it is the duty of the nearest country, possible, nearest country possible, to take those people in. So, for example, okay. Christians from Syria would be refugees. If they're burned alive by ISIS in cages, right. those would be refugees. Right. People who think that America is better than their country um, would not be refugees. So just because they don't uh, qualify for this legal definition, international law definition refugee, you don't think that they should, they should be granted um, granted shelter or or just be allowed to be here because they're seeking a better life? Is that what I'm is that what I'm understanding? Correct. Okay. And I don't think that it's a fundamental birthright to be an American citizen, unless you were born in the United States or immigrated here legally and took a naturalization oath. Okay, and and what's wrong with that? What's wrong with coming here and and you know even if you came here legally, is there? It, do you believe in the idea that people um, who are again seeking a better life, people who are you know very much struggling, perhaps dying or or, or would die in, in Mexico, um, would come up here? And so you're saying that's like um, that they. It's, it's not just that it's not a right, but is that what is the harm in, in them coming here? You know, I've, I've heard sure. a lot of rhetoric about the economy, but like I guess I, I just don't understand the idea of well, they are people just like any American-born citizen is. So why can't they? fuel the economy? Why can't, okay, why can't they drive jobs? A couple of things. They are not people just like any American-born citizen in that they are not citizens of this country, just like I'm not a citizen of Mexico. In Mexico, there are certain rights that are not afforded to me as a non-Mexican sure, citizen. Sure. In fact, even the right to own waterfront property is, a, is an issue. They have much more strict immigration well, I don't laws agree in Mexico. With that either. But, uh, as to your first question, you know, first off, it doesn't address the fact that it's not a human right to be a citizen of any country that you want to be a citizen of. Uh, and where's the harm? Well, let me list a couple of things. Legal immigrants, people who've been waiting, trying to get into this country legally, people who've played by the rules, people who've obeyed the law, sure. they get hurt because we have an overburdened immigration system. Uh, the economy, $116 billion, $116 billion footed to the taxpayers each year, and a dispropor disproportionate amount of crime committed by illegal immigrants who had no business being here in the first place. Those would be three reasons. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of wanting to talk in particular about uh, reasons one and three. Okay. So um, reason, reason three kind of jumped out to me. It's certainly my opinion that if they're criminals, then they should be persecuted. You know, put uh, put into the you know the justice system, whatever. Like, I, I am not How about saying deported. Sure, because they, because they they came here seeking a better life and then just ruin that by being criminals. I I, under, I understand that that I'm not. Some of them aren't seeking a better life, but I'm I'm not supporting criminals. Of course not. I'm I'm supporting people who are who are honestly struggling in their own country and trying to come here. But I didn't I didn't say that you were supporting criminals. You said, what is the harm in just allowing anyone to come here legally or illegally? And I gave you three reasons. I didn't say they are all criminals, and I don't believe that you support criminals. Listen, I don't think you're a monster. I hope you don't think I'm a monster. But I am saying there's a disproportionate amount of crime committed by illegal immigrants, okay? It harms legal immigrants because it overburdens our system. And, of course, it is a harm to the American taxpayer to the tune of, depending who you ask, over $100 billion a year. Those are three reasons. I want to stay with that. I'm not saying that you support criminals. I would, okay. I would not do that. Now, another thing, you're saying it hurts uh, legal immigrants who are trying to come here legally, which, by the way, I, I hope we can agree is difficult. Um, but it, it, I don't see how undocumented immigrants who are not in the system, they're not on the books, um, coming in here hurts people who are legally coming here because if they're undocumented, they're, they're not being put into a queue. It's not like, oh, we're full now. I, I don't understand uh, how You just that, described exactly what it is. That, that they're, that there's, they're there's a limited capacity. How are they being counted? There's a limited capacity as to how many people we can have in a country, especially when you have people who, takes us to number two, right, are a net burden on the American taxpayer. It costs a lot of money to have a legal immigration system, right? It costs sure. a lot of money to be able to monitor, to be able to approve visas to get people to this country legally. And when you have $116 billion uh, being granted to the American taxpayer, and potentially they could go to other other services or other legitimate roles of government because of illegal immigration, that's, yeah, it harms everybody. That seems like a self-fulfilling prophecy there. You're talking about how the uh, there's a huge burden on taxpayers because of the immigration system and the visas and everything. No, no, because of illegal immigrants. Only because of illegal immigrants. Because of illegal immigrants. Because of illegal immigrants exclusively, $116 billion a year. Yeah. And 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 where is that figure coming from? What is are are they? Where's the cost? I don't. I guess I don't understand. If somebody's coming here trying to work a job, trying to live life, where's where's the where's the cost to the government from that? Welfare. Yep. 
That's and one of them, yeah. Welfare, not paying taxes, using the social services, the safety net, the welfare state that we have right now without paying into it. And of course, things like using emergency rooms and they can't bill you because you don't have a social okay. security number. So it's 116 billion. Let's assume I'm off by 20 billion. But you ask for three reasons. Are those three reasons reason enough to say, okay, maybe we have a problem with illegal immigration? Well, not my, not my opinion. Okay, all right. Of course. I mean, in your opinion, sure. But Let me ask you this. Do you believe that the United States needs to have a border? Yeah, we're, we're talking about like a, like a wall or a fence or a gate or something, right? I mean, we're not talking about a little border. The ability border. to prevent people from coming in unless we invite them in. I do not think that there should be a, a border in that sense. You don't? I do not. Okay. So, you don't believe in countries? I, like I said, I believe in the line, if you were to draw a line between America and Mexico, that's fine, that's on a map. But I'm saying if there's nothing but just a field of grass there, I think that's fine. So someone should just, because it's unprotected and there's no wall, someone should just be able to walk across it. But what's the idea of, of protecting a, a plot of land that is, I mean, okay, like... Every country since the beginning of time has had borders and has had a monitoring system to make sure that people who are in the confines of their country are there legally. Are you sure? I'm, I'm fairly sure there are some uh, ones in not, Europe not that, in that have very open borders. Well, we're talking about the European Union. Native Americans didn't really believe in a personal, uh, uh, the concept of personal property, but the United States isn't one of those nations. We are a nation with a system of laws, and we do have a system for legal immigration, and you are to abide by that current system. So let me ask you this. You're against the wall. I see you have a sign here that says yes, no, no human is illegal. illegal. Yes. So I don't really know that we're going to find a whole lot of common ground because I do, be I do believe in borders. And I do believe that people should come here legally. Um, you don't. No human is illegal. Explain to me your point of view. What would you well, do? Well, it's a, it's a, I guess it's like a more like a moral thing. I mean, like, because it, mm -hmm. it, you know, again, if you're, if you are struggling, you know, you're, you're essentially um, being, I don't, I don't know how to say it, but like in in, in, in um, Mexico, you know, the government makes things difficult for these people who want to immigrate, and so it's like you're you're in. It's kind of like you're in between a rock and a hard place, right? Because you're you're trying to to um, enter and, and have a better life, but you come from a, a place of difficulty, and then you know you you come to a place where people are having a good time, or at least you know relatively, and an inferior country to a superior country. I don't know if I'd go that far, but that's what you're describing. An inferior, an inferior government to a superior government. Well, I'll say that. Um, but, but basically, okay. but basically coming into the country seeking what you know. By the way, we advertise as the American dream. So you would say a superior government, the American government, the Mexican government. What makes it superior? Superior economy. How about that? Is economy better? I, what makes it superior? Well, because I'm trying to avoid this racist rhetoric that, that people have when what they talk rhetoric? about like superior countries and everything. Like that's kind of that's you kind just of... describe people wanting to leave a country that is clearly inferior in search of a better. If someone is leaving one country in search of a better life and they say, "I'm going to America," how would you define that country if not superior? A place of perhaps greater opportunity. But. To say superior, you believe is racist because superior rhetoric? is an all-encompassing term. You see, yes, like you know, it's a that... superior country. But you said superior government. Okay, what makes it a superior government? I'm, I'm just using your words here. I, I, I think I'm going to go back on government because I'm, I don't think I'm informed enough about the, the Mexican and American government to make that comparison. Okay. But economy, a superior is there. economy, a superior economy. Well, why is the American economy superior? Um, okay, well, just a good example would be GDP, okay. uh, GDP per capita. You know, um, median income. I mean, like, I guess I don't really know, like. Why, why this is even a question. Well, because you're talking about, you're saying that people have a fundamental right to come here. You're wanting to avoid using the word superior, but you're saying because people seem to have a better time, there seems to be better, there's a reason that they're coming here. I need you. The American you dream. You need to, okay, the American dream. That's what, that's what we market it as. That's like, right. that's like part of the pride of our nation. So is superior economy, the American dream. Yes. Okay, that's not, I just want to make sure that's not considered racist rhetoric. That is not considered racist Why do you think the American economy is so superior to say Mexico? Well, I don't know. I mean, that's a very multifaceted question. I assure you. Well, I mean, like that's simple. Are okay, we I, I, compared to Mexico? Are we a free enterprise economy? I would think so. Good. Okay, so there's one. Um, compared to Mexico, are we a nation with uh, an enshrined constitution and fundamental inalienable rights? Yes. Okay. So, the same laws in place that make, by your own words, a better economy, you said government backed off, a better economy, a place that's more desirable, 
are also the same laws that say people have to come here legally. You can't have one without the other. And what you are suggesting is to allow people who are leaving an inferior economy, I would also argue, government, country, culture in general, Mexico, that's why they're leaving. Your suggestion is to allow people to come here off of the books and take advantage of a current welfare state that we have while not necessarily contributing. But without saying that the United States is superior. It's so desirable, by your own words, people would risk death to come over here, but it would be racist to say it's superior. Right, because you're talking about a superior country, you're talking about... They, but uh, that's, that's your... That's, I just want to make sure you, you understand the, 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 the confliction there. I'm sorry, would you say that, that America is a superior country to Mexico? Yes. Sorry, well that's that's your that's your words, that's your opinion. Um, I also think that human beings can be illegal. Also I, that they can be in a country illegally. There's something you, you said as you were talking, I kinda of wanna go back on for a minute. You said that it's the same laws that um, the same laws that make it difficult for them to come in is uh, or, or difficult for them to stay here without uh, going through the, the rigid uh, legal process. What I'm saying is the same thing that makes America a more desirable place, the United States of America a more desirable place, is the same reason they need to enter this country legally because we have a rule of it's, law that needs to be enforced. It's from the same paper. I mean, it's from the same constitution. But the con but it, there's no evidence, or at least I would think that there's evidence that that particular part of the constitution. I, I think it's the same paper, not the same, not the same sentence, not the same paragraph that makes um, that makes the economy so great. That makes our our, our nation um, great. Why do you believe our nation is great? Uh, I, I mean, I don't know. That's not really a topic of discussion here. Well, it is. We're talking about a wall. People want to come here. Well, right? yeah, and that's okay. a, it's a national security issue because so many, great. more people want to come to the United States than anywhere else in the world. Well, Why do you think the United States is so great? Then I guess a, a, I'll go back to what I said, the economy. The economy is great. The economy is great. The economy is, is doing okay. And why do you think that is? I, I don't know. I mean, again, that's a very multifaceted question. Like, I mean, the economy is fine in Canada. Sure. So then, uh, Canada doesn't border Mexico. So people who come from, you know, Mexico, I'm sure they would just as. Uh, but do you, th you think it's just the economy? If they could teleport to, to Canada, Wait, what do you mean? You think it's just the economy? I don't, I don't know what you're, what you're going for here. What, well, my, my point is, you've talked about the great lengths that people will go to to get to this country, and I agree yes. with you. But you said you don't want to use the superior rhetoric because for some reason that's racially charged. And yes. by the way, that'll help. Well, I mean, okay. For, I think for one, doing, we're doing a lot of bring around the roads here, and I like right, to laser right. on a point where you're saying superior in every way, but you don't want to use the word superior. How is it racially charged to say because, that America is because superior? Because there are aspects of America that are superior uh, to aspects of other countries, but to say a country is superior is evoking rhetoric such as, like, um, you know, Germany World War II, right? It's Talking not. about how, how is it not? Because they were saying a race is superior. We are saying a country is superior. It was a set of ideals, a set of laws is superior. By the way, a lot of different races here in the United States, they would all be included in the superior. I don't think it's an apt comparison. Why is it racially charged rhetoric to say that America is a, is a superior country? Well, I mean, I'm not sure it, it particularly matters that there are so many um, different different races here when, you know, you have like um, America still being predominantly white. So, I mean, it's still predominantly white nation. And, and I, I mean, like to, to, to certainly much more diverse than, than most other countries. Fair, fair. Yeah. And, and I am all for diversity. I'm wearing a shirt that says diversity. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm all about diversity in, in countries, and I, I think that's a good thing. But we are still predominantly white, and you know we still have disproportionate white white representation in government, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Is that why you want more uh, illegal immigration? Because you like to see us less white. <laughs> No, because I, I, and I was coming back to, uh, to the point that I was originally making is they're they're struggling, they're trying to, to escape that and come here and, and live the American dream that we market, and then they're just told you need to you need to get the heck back to Mexico. Yeah. I mean, that, so what is that life? What is that existence? Mexico? No. What is what is the life of a person who who is um, again per perhaps on the verge of death, but we could just say verge of extreme poverty um, for terrible. for reasonable. Yeah, it is terrible. That's not, doesn't mean that and then, doesn't mean that we don't need to have laws. Do you think that a wall? Or border. It sounds like you said that saying America is a superior country is, is racially charged. It is. Um, do you think that a is that why you're against this idea of a wall and a border? Do you believe that that's a racially charged issue? I've heard a lot of people. Well, no, it's it's more out of sympathy for the people who are who are trying to come here. I, I think that they are so so often vilified and demonized that you know people don't again they don't have that well, compassion. So let's talk about only what you and I are talking about here. Okay. I haven't vilified or demonized anyone. I have compassion for these people. Well, you're saying put them back in Mexico, which is yeah. a which is a, a tortured existence. In that's, not, that's not vilifying or demonizing them. I can be compassionate and say we still have a country with laws that you have to follow. So do you, you consider that vilifying them to or struggle. demonizing? And leave them to struggle when we have the resources to support them. We don't. Let me ask you this. Yeah. What building is that over there? That is a library. Okay, that's a library. Yes. Um, do you know what their hours are, actually? 
Uh, they're 24 hours, actually. Really? They are 24 yeah. hours? Uh, but I think past 11, you have to have a student card to get in. Okay. Yeah. So you have to prove that you're a student? Yes. What happens if you're not a student and you don't have a card after 11? And then you, you don't enter? I'm not sure what, what your point is here, precisely. But is that, is that racially charged? That is not is that racially. discriminatory? This is such a straw man. Hold on. No, it's not. This is, this is why, a library li versus why a country? Do they have the, yes. No, it's very comparable. Why no, does a library it? have the right scale, to tell people? Scale matters, sir. Yeah, yeah. Scale does matter. <laughs> so this is a, a university, right? Where they can say, yeah. you have to be a student to use these services to be here after these hours. Yeah. You don't think that's appropriate for a country to do? <laughs> Well, well, no, because, okay, well, first of all, people chose to come here. That There's a big matter, element of choice. People don't choose to be born into Mexico or born into America. I mean, it's kind of interesting, like, how people think that they fundamentally deserve these things, but that's a tangent. So, uh, but it's basically, like, people pay tuition to come here, and therefore, they, they sort of have that, and again, they choose to come here, and so that's the difference. Um, kind of like paying taxes. Right, but, the, but you are not, but still nobody chooses to be born in Mexico or live their lives. Living a life is different than having a college experience. Sure, it's different than a college experience. I'm simply using the idea of a barrier there to, to, to paint a picture. Again, well, and unless you're contributing exactly. here in school, and that's what I'm talking about, contributing tax-paying American citizens. By the way, legal immigrants, I'm including here. That's, we asked again, we're going back to three <laughs> answers. What harm does it cause? Mm -hmm. That's the harm it causes to legal immigrants. Just like if someone came here and rented out all the books and they weren't a student, I don't see what's wrong with having a key card to prove that you are a contributing member of this country. But I also don't think there's anything wrong with saying that the United States is superior to Mexico. So I don't really know that, I, 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 don't, I think there's cognitive dissonance there if you're saying, well, I can't say that we're superior to Mexico, but no human is illegal because so many people are willing to die to come over here. I think we need to be honest about where we're lining up. The United States is a better country. That's why people want to come here. I'm compassionate because I'm honest about that, but you still need to sign the guest book on the way in. Um, and if we don't agree that there need to be borders, I don't think we're going to find much contract. I, I like how you phrase it as just sign the guest book on the way in. Like, it's that simple, right? Like, you can just... Go through the process of becoming a citizen legally. Which is, again, difficult and could, could still... It is. People, I think it's worth it. It, it. You know, do you... Okay, well, do you agree with perhaps easing up on that a little bit, making it easier for, I don't. for people to come in legally? Okay. I don't. Um, and then another point, I know this is kind of jumping a little right. bit, but... Well, I, I, we do have to get going here. But oh, okay. Our permits run out, but go ahead. All right. Um, illegal immigrants, you're saying they don't contribute anything? Is, is that is that what you're saying? That they just come here and all they do is just they I'm not saying, money okay, from I'm not saying all illegal immigrants, but illegal immigrants as a whole are a net burden on the American taxpayer, absolutely. And do you think that there's something maybe we could do to help change that instead of Yes. Instead of instead of deporting them or, or securing the border? No, I think that's the solution. You think that's the solution? I think we to, try that first and then see what else we got. Yeah. And it, and, and Pl plug the hole, just like if you had a sinking ship. Plug the hole, plug the, the gaps in the fence. Unfortunately, make sure that we have make sure that we have border security. And yeah, I think deport people who are here illegally. Yeah, that's um, what I believe. Unfortunately, I think we're not going to find common ground because I'm coming from a place of compassion, and I'm talking about um, sort of coming from. And again, I was going to come back to saying like, well, I, well, I if think, we have I compassion for these people. I like, feel compassion for these people. But do you? Yeah. Do you really? I don't think that being compassion means giving somebody, somebody everything they want. And I have a lot of compassion for legal immigrants uh, to this country. I even had someone who worked for me who was a legal immigrant whose visa ran out and he had to leave. And I have compassion because that guy was a hard worker. Uh, we've had several people who actually work for my company who have immigrated. We've had people from Germany, we've had people from Canada, we have someone from Colombia right now, and I have compassion for them. So I think for you to assume that you have the moral high ground on compassion just because you don't really have a fundamental worldview yet as to how to solve the problem, First of all, I, I haven't. I, I think you're not affording me the same luxury I afford you, and that I assume you want to solve the problem and you care about people. You're just wrong in your solution. To say that you're coming from a place of compassion, assuming that I'm not, I, I don't think that's the best way to have a conversation. But I understand why you would think that. But, and and it, that is what I think. And I. Uh, that's okay. But I still, Thank you. I still appreciate. I still appreciate that I was able to meet you. And, uh, Thank you very much, sir. Yes. I appreciate it. All right, you have a good one. Well, there you have it. Some surprising common ground found. Uh, some yelling, uh, you know, that countries aren't a thing, but it was mostly productive. We hope you enjoy this installment. Please support it live with credit.com slash mug club, and we will see you next time. Well, I won't see you, but you'll, you'll watch me here.